Hello everyone and welcome back to IM Technos. In this video, let's explore Rack and see how to set it up inside Amazon Bedrock using a real project data set. So what exactly is RAG? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Simply put, it combines retrieving relevant documents with AI-generated answers. Imagine you work at a company with hundreds of internal policy documents stored in S3. An employee asks, what is the procedure for requesting remote work approval? Without RAG, the AI tries to answer from its training data and might have a generic or outdated response. With RAG, the system first retrieves the relevant policy document from S3, then the LLM uses that document to generate a precise, up-to-date answer. The employee gets an accurate, context-aware response without manually searching through the documents. So instead of just relying on the LLM's built-in knowledge, RAG fetches information from external sources like S3, OpenSearch, or Kendra, so the answers are more accurate and context-aware. Now, why choose RAG? Well, it's all about accuracy and relevance. By grounding AI answers in real data, it reduces hallucinations and ensures the information is up to date. It's scalable, works with large data sets without retraining, and can handle both structured and unstructured information. In short, it makes AI smarter and more reliable. So when should you use RAG? Well, imagine situations where employees need answers from internal documents, information changes frequently, you need context-specific responses, or teams are looking for precise information quickly. In all these cases, RAG makes AI smarter and more reliable. And lastly, how does RAG work? When a user query comes in, the system retrieves relevant documents from your knowledge base and the LLM uses these documents to generate a context-aware answer, ensuring the user receives a relevant and accurate response. Now that we know what RAG is and how it works, let's jump into a hands-on demo and build our own knowledge-powered AI. We'll start by uploading our dataset into an S3 bucket. Next, we will create a knowledge base by integrating a vector database with S3 as the source data. Then we will test the setup by running a prompt. The system will retrieve the most relevant sections called context from the database. These chunks are combined with the user's question to form an augmented prompt, which is then sent to the foundation model in the bedrock. The model generates a response that is accurate, up-to-date, and aligned with your business needs. I am in the AWS Management Console. The creation of knowledge base in Amazon Bedrock is not supported for the root user. So the first step is to create an IAM user. Search for IAM in the search bar and select it. In the dashboard, under Access Management, click Users. Then click Create User. Give the user a name such as RAG MIG2025 user. Enable provide user access to AWS Management Console. Select I want to create an IAM user and set a password. Next, disable the option that forces a password reset so you don't need to reset it when logging in for the first time. Then click Next. Under Set Permissions, choose Attach Policies directly. Select Administrator Access and click Next. On the review and create page, scroll down and click create user after verifying the details. That's it. We have now created an IAM user. Now copy the sign in URL. Let's log in with this IAM user in a private window so that it doesn't overlap with the root account. Paste the URL. The account ID will be populated automatically. Enter the username and password. Then click Sign In. Before we configure RAG, let's take a look at the data set we will be working with. Our data set is all about AWS Migration Initiative, a project focused on moving all on-premises application and database to the AWS Cloud. The goal is to ensure minimal downtime, high security, and cost optimization. The data set also include important project details such as the internal code, leadership roles, 
and other information that keeps the migration on track. We also have repositories, milestones, and FAQs that cover the project end to end. Each knowledge entry in the data set is structured, so the model knows how to respond. This format ensures the bedrock agent, which is the component that connects your questions to the knowledge base and the foundation model, can fetch the right information and give project specific responses. Now go back to the console and upload this data set into an S3 bucket. Search for S3 and select from there. Make sure you're in North Virginia region and click Create Bucket. Give the bucket a name, for example, RAG Dataset 2025. Scroll to the bottom and click Create Bucket. Now click on the bucket you just created, then upload the dataset file by dragging and dropping it into the console. Scroll down and click Upload. Once the upload is complete, click Close. Your file is now uploaded and ready to use. Now let's move on to setting up RAG in Amazon Bedrock. In a new tab, search for Bedrock and select it. In the left panel, select Knowledge Bases under Build section. Scroll down, then click Create and choose Knowledge Base with Vector Store. Give it a name like MIG 25 AB stands for Knowledge Base. You can also add a description which is optional, but it's always a good practice to note what this knowledge base will be used for, such as project specific documentation for AWS migration. Next, we see IAM permissions. This is important because Bedrock needs permission to access other AWS services on your behalf. By default, you can either create a new service role automatically or choose an existing one. In our case, it's creating a new execution role for the knowledge base. Now, let's move on to choose a data source type. This is where you decide what kind of data source you want to connect to your knowledge base. The first option is Amazon S3. This lets you bring in files and documents stored in your S3 bucket. This is the most common choice for structured and unstructured data. Then we have Confluence, Salesforce, and shared point all shown as preview. These allow you to connect directly to external collaboration or CRM platforms if your data lives there. There is also a web crawler option in preview, which helps extract content from public web pages you are authorized to crawl. Finally, a custom option, which gives you flexibility to integrate your own data source if others don't fit your use case. For this demo, I will use S3 as a data source since it's straightforward to upload and manage our documents and it works seamlessly with Bedrock's RAG workflow. Scrolling down, there is a tag section. Tags are just labels. They help you organize, search, and manage AWS resources more efficiently. You can add up to 50 tags if you'd like. At the bottom, you will find log delivery. This is optional but useful if you want to configure application logs and send them to multiple destinations for monitoring or troubleshooting. I leave both sections blank and click next to continue. Now we are in configure data source page. With S3 selected as a data source, let's provide a data source name like MIG25 data source DS. Since our data set is in this account, I'll select this AWS account. Under S3 URI, you point Bedrock to the data set file in your S3 bucket. So click Browse S3, pick the bucket we created earlier, and select the dataset file object and click Choose. Moving on to the parsing strategy, here you decide how Bedrock processes the data. So Bedrock gives us three options here. First, the default parser. This one simply extracts plain text from your files like PDFs or Word documents. It ignores tables, chats, or images, and it's the most cost-effective option. Perfect for text-heavy content like manuals, FAQs, or policies. Second, the data automation parser. This is more advanced. It can pull out not just text, but also tables, images, and charts. It's great for complex documents like financial reports or research papers where you don't want to lose any structured data. And third, we have 
Foundation models as a parser. This one uses a foundation model like Claude or Titan to intelligently read and interpret your documents. It understands context and relationships between sections, which makes it ideal for things like legal contracts or medical documents. In short, use default parser for simple text, use data automation parser for rich structured content, and foundation models where you need deeper AI-powered understanding. For this demo, we'll keep it simple and go with the default parser. Now let's talk about chunking strategy. This decides how your document is split into smaller pieces or chunks before being stored in the knowledge base. But before that, you might notice the term token mentioned here, like 300 tokens or 500 tokens. So what exactly is a token? A token is simply a small piece of text that the model reads. It could be a whole word, a part of a word, or even punctuation. Models processes everything as tokens. That's how they understand and generate text. Now that we know what tokens are, let's see how chunking works. First, we have default chunking. This automatically splits your text into chunks of about 300 tokens. If your document is shorter, it won't split it at all. It's simple, efficient, and works best for most cases. So it's a recommended option for beginners. Second, we have fixed size chunking. Here, you can choose your own chunk size, maybe 500 or 1000 tokens. It doesn't look at the meaning of the text, just the size. So it's great when you want consistency. Third, we have hierarchical chunking. This one organizes your text like a tree structure with parent and child chunks. It keeps relationships between sections, which is perfect for structured content like manuals or legal documents. Fourth, semantic chunking. This is intelligent one. It splits text based on meaning. Sentences or paragraphs that talk about the same topic are grouped together. That means when you ask a question later, the system retrieves the most contextually relevant chunk. And finally, no chunking. This means your document won't be split at all. Bedrock will treat it as one large text block. Use this only if your data is already pre-processed into small files. So in short, default chunk works for most cases, fixed chunk for consistency, hierarchical keeps structure, semantic focuses on meaning, no chunking is for pre-split data. For this demo, we'll keep it simple and stick with the default chunking. You'll also see an option for the transformation function, which allows you to use a Lambda function to pre-process or customize the data before ingestion. We don't need that here, so we'll keep it blank. Finally, under advanced details, you will notice options for encryption and data deletion. For transient storage, Bedrock uses a default KMS key to encrypt your data. That's fine for us, so we will leave it as is. And there is a data deletion policy. This decides what happens to your vector store if you delete the data source. For this demo, I'll select retain, which means the vector store will still be available even if the data source is removed. Once everything looks good, click next to continue. Moving on to the next step, which is configure data storage and processing. This is where we decide how Amazon Bedrock will store and process our data. Here, we need to select an embeddings model. And this is what converts our text into vector representation that the system can understand. Click on select model. You will see a list of available options from providers like Amazon and Cohere. For this demo, I'm selecting Amazon Titan Embeddings G1. It's a powerful text-to-text -text model that generates high quality embeddings, which is ideal for knowledge bases and semantic search. We will keep the inference type as on demand, which means we will pay only when the model is actually used, making it cost effective for testing or smaller workloads. Once that's selected, click apply. Next, we will configure the vector store. This is where those embeddings will actually be stored. A vector store is like a special kind of database designed to save and search through embeddings efficiently. You will see two options here. First, Quick create a new vector store. This option automatically creates a new vector store for you in your AWS account. Bedrock takes care of everything behind the scenes from setup to permissions. So it's great for beginners or quick demos. Second, use an existing vector store. If you already have a vector store created for another project, you can select that here and reuse it. 
This is more common in production setups where multiple knowledge bases share the same vector store. We'll go with the recommended quick create a new vector store option for this walkthrough. Then under the vector store type, you will choose the type of vector database you want depending on what's available and supported by your embeddings model. I'll choose Amazon Open Search Serverless. Click Next. Here, the Review and Create page. Take a moment to double check everything here, like your knowledge base name, data sources, embedding model, and settings. Once everything looks good, click Create. Amazon Bedrock will set up your knowledge base and it will be ready to use in just a few minutes. Now that the knowledge base is ready, let's test it. To enable the test knowledge base option, go to the data source section, select the S3 data source and click sync. Next, click test knowledge base. Under retrieval and response generation, click select model. Choose Amazon Nova Micro and click apply. Under test section, I'll ask a question from the data set like, what is our internal project code for the AWS migration? The agent should retrieve the knowledge base and respond MIG 2025, which exactly matches our data set information. Let's try another one. Who manages? API documentation, the assistant should answer developer experience team. Again, which matches the data set. So this is exactly what RAG is designed for. Instead of relying only on pre-trained knowledge base, the model retrieves context from your documents and provide precise project specific answers. That means as your project evolves, you just update the data set in S3 and the assistant automatically stays current and there is no need to retrain. So once you're done experimenting with different options, let's proceed with the cleanup. Follow the same order to avoid unnecessary errors. So first in the bedrock console, go to knowledge bases, select the knowledge base we created and click delete. Make sure to enable the vector data option, type delete, and confirm. In that meanwhile, in a new tab, search for open search service and select it. In the left navigation, under serverless, select dashboard. Choose your collection and click delete and confirm the same. Scroll down to delete the data access policies, confirm it. Same way, delete the encryption policies and network policies. Now go to S3, empty the bucket by deleting all the objects first. So delete the objects and then the bucket itself. Go to buckets, select the bucket name, Click on delete, give the bucket name and click delete bucket. Finally, in the root account, go to IAM users and delete the IAM user and confirm it. That's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and happy learning.